Everything is made up of atoms. And let's suppose this rectangle represents a piece of metal. And the dots inside it, the blue dots, represent the nuclei of the atoms. The, the atoms are arranged in a lattice structure, and the exact arrangement is different in different materials. But in this case, those represent the nuclei of the atoms. And then the red, little red dashes represent the electrons, little ne negative signs representing a negative charge. Now, metals have what we call free electrons. A typical piece of metal has a lot of free electrons. And here's what that means. We've said that the outer electrons, the electrons on the outer shell of an atom, tend to be more loosely bound to the atom. Those are the ones that can be easily stripped off and removed from the atom. Well, in metals, most metals have a lot of electrons that are so loosely bound to their nucleus that they're essentially not bound at all. An electron might be free to wander all through the material and go from one atom to another. And most metals have lots of free electrons that are just free to roam through the material. They are so loosely bound to the individual nuclei that they're essentially free. It is these materials that have a lot of free electrons that are good electrical conductors. If something is a good electrical conductor, that means that electric current can flow easily through that material. And in this case, the current is simply the flow of electrons through the material. There's very little resistance to the movement of the charge through the material. Not every material is a conductor. If you rub a balloon on your hair and get electrons on the balloon, they don't flow through the balloon. Plastic and rubber are very poor conductors. They're said to be electrical insulators, the opposite of a conductor is an insulator. Insulators do not allow electrons to move through them very freely. Insulators tend not to have a lot of free electrons and any movement of electrons from one atom to another is very very difficult. The electrons are more tightly bound to the atoms. Most materials are either good conductors or good insulators. There aren't many that are in between. And I'll list here some good conductors and some good insulators. In general, metals tend to be good conductors, and one of the best is gold. Gold isn't used for a lot of applications, though, obviously, because it's very expensive. You don't have gold wiring in your house. The same is true with silver. Even though silver is a very good conductor, it's too expensive to be widely used. Copper, though, is much cheap, much, much cheaper than gold and silver, and the wiring in your house is probably copper. Some houses are wired with aluminum, and the, the wire coming in from the power company to your house is often aluminum. Most of the wiring through your house, though, in most homes is copper. And most of the wiring in an electrical device, like if you have a computer or a stereo or a television, most of the wiring inside there is copper. Salt water is also a good conductor, and so is wet ground. Very dry ground wouldn't be a very good conductor, but wet or even just a little bit moist ground makes a good conductor. Um, one interesting story about gold as a conductor here, when they were working on the Manhattan Project, this was when they were designing and constructing the first nuclear weapon in World War II, a very secret project. But they were doing a lot of advanced physics research and experimentation along with the project. And for, for some of that work, they needed gold because it was a good conductor. They needed to build some circuits with very, very low electrical resistance or very, very high electrical conductivity. And so they needed gold. So they got some gold, some gold bars from Fort Knox, and they melted them down and made electrical wiring out of these gold bars. And then when the project was over, they stripped the plastic off of the wiring, melted them back into the bars, and sent them back for storage in Fort Knox. So the gold was not used, it was just borrowed. It wasn't used up. And they used it in the project for its uh, unique electrical conductivity. Now some materials tend to be good insulators. Plastic in general is a good insulator. You could also put uh, rubber on the list. Wood tends to be a good insulator, and so does paper. 
and you can also put glass on the list. Glass is a good insulator. And pure water. Water without any impurities tends to be a good electrical insulator. And most things are one or the other, a good conductor or a good insulator. There are some materials, however, that are right in between, and these are materials that we call semiconductors. A semiconductor is a material that isn't really a good conductor, but it's also not really a bad conductor. It's right in between being a conductor or an insulator. And an example would be the element silicon. And computer chips are made with silicon. The unique electrical property of being a semiconductor allows them to make circuits that can perform logical operations. Like they might have a wire and another wire and they can say if some charge is present on this first wire then some current will flow through this junction in this direction so they're able to make logical decisions in the circuitry in the circuitry if one thing then another and it's the unique elect electrical property of being a semiconductor that allows circuits of that nature to be built